can you cut down your phone bill? How do you know which way your blood flows? And how much do you pack for the weekend? How strong is a straw? I wouldn't class a straw in the top ten list of very strong things, right? <laughs> You'd think Definitely a not, no. No, not you think a straw, straw is a weak, bendy thing like that, don't you? Well, it is, look. Well, how can you put a straw straight through a potato? You can't. Just like I've done there. Look there. at that. Yeah, you drill those holes first. Then. I drill them through, did I? Well, watch this then. One genuine potato, one straw. If I smash the straw into the potato, it'll break, won't it? Yes. Yeah. Not if I put my thumb over the end, because I'm compressing the air, turning the straw into a rod, a lot of concentration, much force, and... <laughs> even more well. force, and... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, very good. You can do it, Fred. Hey. That hey. Success at last. Yeah. Have a go. Can we have oh. a packet each, then, in that case? <laughs> so, thumb, thumb over the end. Over yeah? the end, okay. a lot of force, and that's. Ah, uh, I did it. Well oh, done. Yeah, yeah, most of the way through, anyway. And that's how strong a straw is. Now, how do you make things difficult for yourself? Well, you do it by learning to touch type. When you learn to touch type, you learn to place your fingers on certain home keys. Now, a, a typewriter isn't laid out with A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on. It's laid out in the most peculiar way, using what's known as a QWERTY keyboard, Q-W-E-R-T-Y. Now, what do you think is the most common letter in the alphabet? Got to be one of the vowels. Yeah. Sorry? E. E. Right. Well, to strike an E, you have to move this finger up, strike the key, and move it back. What about the next most commonly used letter? Fred? T, is it? T, T, T yes. Yeah. To strike a T, you move this finger up and then over, strike it, back and back. Pretty difficult, really. Not in the most simple positions. Why do we have QWERTY keyboards? Well, we have them because when typewriters were first invented, manufacturers had to make life more difficult for the typists to slow them down, simply because the mechanics of a typewriter were pretty poor. The keys didn't strike very easily, and the typewriters would often get jammed up. This one here, which is a terribly old typewriter, has two keyboards, in fact, one for capital letters, one for lower case. As we move through time, we went down to just the one keyboard with a shift key to give you capital letters. However, this one, you can't see what on earth you're typing, and you can't see if you've made any mistakes. Then we move on to something. Ah, oh, wonderful. You can actually see what you're typing here. Still, though, oh, uh, with the QWERTY keyboard. This actually is quite nice, because it's one of the very first portable typewriters. Mm, Hold over lovely. and take it with you. So how can you make life easier for yourself? Well, you can do it by using one of these. This is a Multron keyboard. Now, the inventor started from scratch. He wanted to know two things. He wanted to know the most comfortable position for your hands to be in, which is why this looks so strange. You place your fingers over the home keys like so, and he decided that the most commonly used letters should be in the simplest place. So to type V, you would have T, H, and E, never having to lift a finger from the board. But of course, he couldn't retrain 120 million typists worldwide to use this particular keyboard, so he had to compromise. He has here a special little button which can take this back to the QWERTY keyboard. And that is how you can make life much easier for yourself. How much do you pack when you go away for the weekend? Carol, how much do you pack? Well, a good suitcase, actually, because I've got about four changes of outfit. I've got my makeup, cleansers. Mm. And, yeah, about that. I'll One small suitcase, yeah. yeah. Fred? Well, you know... Well, uh, actually, uh, Fred... Uh, well, you know... Uh, you've got to see this. This is actually what Fred takes with him at the weekend. I stick it sneaked into his dressing room and pull this out. It's called a portmanteau. It's kind of a cross between a wardrobe and a toilet bag. It's got everything in here. And it, look at this huge old piece of antiquated equipment. Not the kind of thing that a modern man should take away with him uh, for the weekend. Come over here, because I will show you what a modern man should take away with him for the weekend. And that's it. <laughs>
Sig that's it? That's it. Significantly <laughs> smaller than your mobile phone. You can't home. get anything in there. <laughs> oh, you'd be amazed at what's in here. Watch this. Watch this. This is absolutely brilliant, Carol. You like this? You like this? Do you reckon that is? What? Um, something for tablets? Yeah. No, watch this. This is brilliant. Talk about space mm -hmm. saving. Folds out ah. like that. Cool, huh? <laughs> Brilliant. Instant toothbrush. Yes. Any guesses as to what? Uh... A phone card, credit card. Yeah, it's a credit card holder, kit. isn't it? No, you're going to love this. <laughs> it's a flipping razor. Look at that. That's a razor blade there. Flips over. There's a mirror on there. You can check your shave. Have a shave. Isn't that superb? That's wonderful. But this is the best bit. This is the best bit. How about that? What do you think that is? Um... No idea. It's, it's sort of like it's cotton it's wool or something like that, isn't it? Uh, yeah, watch this. Yes, Believe it or not, me. that is a flannel. It's a flannel? It's a dehydrated flannel, actually. And all you have to do is dip it in water and it resumes its full size. How oh, about that? How do you get it back again? <laughs> You've got to dry it out with the hairdryer for a couple of weeks. <laughs> but um, that really is how much a mod man should take away with him for the weekend. Not really, Toppy. This is what you really need. Look, I've got a toothbrush as well inside mine, just as you have. But I've also got toothpaste in mine there, you see. And I've got aftershave down this end, and I've got a razor. Not only that, I've also got shaving foam, you see. And not only that, even, I've also got a nail file. But that's what you really need. Want to borrow it this weekend? I don't believe it. Out out. How can you tell the sex of a chameleon? Well, haven't the male, th that one there, that's got the horns, that means it's a male. Good answer, okay. but nothing to do with horns at all. One thing, though, all chameleons have got in common is the ability to swivel their eyes in quite opposite directions. Now, when they're eating their food, both eyes go forward as they concentrate on what they're eating. But when they're looking around for a prey or an enemy, then the eyes can swivel around behind their heads almost. Another thing they've all got in common are the feet. These little toes in digits of two and three, wonderful for climbing. Is it the feet then? Are the males different feet to females? No, nothing to do with the, with the feet either, just something else I thought I'd tell you. But another thing all chameleons have got in common, as everyone knows, is their ability to change colour, to blend in with their surroundings, this wonderful camouflage. And the one thing which makes males change colour most dramatically and violently is anger or jealousy. If they see another male, because he's on their territory, they're liable to curl their tails and slightly change colour. Let's see if it works as we bring in this little dummy. Oh, yes. You'll notice a very slight but immediate darkening yeah. in the colour of Colin the chameleon because he's seen another male and he doesn't like it. And that's how you can tell the sex of a chameleon. Poor old Colin. Now, how do you know <laughs> where your blood flows? Well, it's your veins and your arteries. Everyone knows that. Mm -hmm. But how? How do you know? As we all know now, what happens is the heart pumps blood out through the arteries and then that blood returns through the veins. But over 500 years ago, there were a couple of alternative theories going around. But in 1616, William Harvey, an English physician, derived a terribly simple experiment to prove just what happens. All right, I want this arm. Mm -hmm. All right, now let's pick this vein here. Now, if I press down there, stopping the blood flow, and drain your vein, you can see it immediately fills Ooh. back up again. So the blood must be running in this direction. If I do it here, compress the vein there, drain it in that direction, you can see that it remains empty up until this point, but the blood doesn't trickle back into the vein. So there must be some valve stopping it there. And that's what the experiment showed Harvey, and that is what happens. Let me show you with this. This is a vein, this is a valve, and this is a bit of blood. Now, if the blood goes through the vein, through the valve, you can see that it can't return. And that is how you know where your blood flows. How do you play the mouth organ in China?
Wow, what a beautiful sound from the Chinese mouth organ. Now then, you don't call it the mouth organ, though, do you? It, this is called a sheng. A sheng? Sheng. Now, how do you play it? How does it work? And uh, actually, it's uh, about 32 pipes. There are 10, 10 pipes on the bike and the 10 pipes in the middle, like this, and the 12 pi pipes on the front. So when you play, you, you have to put your finger inside. So you can play thing. notes and chords? Yes. Yeah. Can you play a, a chromatic scale for me, please, Green? And a Chinese scale? Now, I know that the harmonica is about 500 years old. How old is the shung? Uh, the shung about uh, 2,000 years old. Well, it is such a beautiful sound. I think we should hear Gu Yi and uh, Li Zhen play once more. Um, mm. How do you say thank you in Chinese? Xie xie. Xie xie. Beautiful. How can you cut down on the size of your phone bills? You know the problem every quarter, the phone bill comes in longer and longer, more and more money. How can you cut down on that? I've done major market research into this and discovered that all of us phoned one person far, far more often than we call anybody else. Carol, true? Yep, that is true, yep. Who do you call? Uh, my mother, about six times a day, probably. Six times a day, yes. more than anybody else? Yeah. Toppy? Yeah. Mm, that would be telling, but we're on the phone for like half an hour at a time. So we're all agreed then? Mm. Yeah. So, taking the whole thing one stage further, if you had a direct phone line from you to that one other person that you regularly yeah. call, mm -hmm. straight between you and them, you bypass British Telecom, you have no yeah. bills to pay. That We're agreed, great. are we? Lateral right. thinking. Let me show Very you good. how it's going to work. You cop hold of that, you're at the top there. You cop hold of that one there. Now, if you speak into that end, Toppy, the vibration, mm. the sound wave will be taken along the cord, pulled tightly, yeah, 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 and Carol, yeah, you'll hear it. Yeah. Speak. Hello, Carol. Can Hello. you hear me? Yeah, can you hear him? Exciting. Yes. You can wonderful. hear him. Prove yeah. it to everybody else. Wonderful. Hold it against that lovely microphone. Yeah. Can we pull right. the string tight? Pull the string yeah, very yeah, tight. Yeah. Speak, Toppy. Hello, Carol. Can you hear me? Good. Yeah. And it's marvellous. So you see? Fred, I mean, the thing is, yes. I'm talking to... Gus can just talk to me. I, I don't need... I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. That's only a model. That's only a prototype. Now I'm going to show you the real thing. The biggest direct line deluxe phone system in the whole world. The world unveiling of the Dynaphone Binphone. And here, the Mark II oh. Dynaphone. Like this is a bin. Don't look at it like that at all. Don't that look at it thing. like that. No electrical impulses. Totally green. Gareth, put your head inside that end, please. What? Carol, put your head inside the other end. And pull the wire taut. Lift right. it up. Lift what? it up. Oh, Polish okay. boy. It Pull it taut. Pull it taut. Stick yeah. your head inside it. And when I say go, Gareth, speak. Go! Oh, okay. Hello, Hello, Carol! Carol. No, 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 no. No, no, you listen. Testing You're works. receiving heat. I can't hear a thing when just, I hear that Just works. listen. Oh, oh, right. Stop it. Oh. When I say speak, you speak. No, I was speaking. Now wait till I say... Shut up. Yes. Shut up. Speak, Gareth. Yes. Hello, Carol. This is Gareth. Yes. Testing yes. the dinophone. Stop, 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 Gareth. Did you hear what he said? Oh. I can't hear a thing with a head outside that dust thing. Stick your head back in and speak to him when I say... When I say... down your phone bill. Lines go And that's how, how for now. now.